hello. And you should be listening to Let's Drone Out. As usual, we'll just wait for the stream to catch up. But you should be listening to Let's Drone Out every Thursday, 8 p.m. somewhere on the internet. 8 p.m. ish. 8 p.m. It's always ish. You have to put an ish. Yeah. If it's everything's working all right. Approximately hoping, praying. 8 p.m. ish. Oh, there we go. Eight. Yep. When we're done and we finished arguing with Tony. Right, I am joined by my man slave who's thankfully not in a bit... Uh, le- is it Leia? Yeah. Tony? Hello. You you broke up then, but hi. Hello. <laughs> and our special guest, HBI guy. Hello. Hello. How you doing, man? He's a little or nervous. <laughs> I'm a little or bit <laughs> Um, For any of you who aren't in the know, HPI is a brand called HPI Racing. I'm guessing you used to race cars, RC cars. Not, not competitively like I do multi-rotors, but, um, but car, yeah, yeah, I used to use them a lot, spend a lot of money on them. Yep. And you're a traitor to your, to your first hobby. What do you yeah. have to say to yourself? I'm glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trouble is, cars break all the time, don't they? Well, they cars do. break all the time as well. Well, I, I don't know. The, the problem is, any SC on the car that I last broke was 180 quid, and I just went, I'm not doing that for one, eight, one ESC, just forget it. No. That's a lot of wonga, isn't it, for one yeah. ESC? Yeah. That is, that is mental. What? Why? I suppose the high current draw. To be honest, I didn't know anything about hobby things, things like that at the time. If I, if I did, I would just bought a cheaper ESC. But I was obviously wanted to replace it at the time with an, uh, a proper HPI one, and they were at 180 quid. So, yeah, I, I thought, forget that. I'm not doing that. That is mental, isn't it? <laughs> What's the cheapest ESC you can get now, like in the UK? Probably six, and a, six and a half quid? Yeah, six and a half quid. Do you reckon? Like £180, pound. yeah. <laughs> 180 quid, like that is mental. Well, mind you, we have to buy four of them. It's usually about a, te- a de- decent ESC, it's 10 or a corner. Always buy five. You should learn that by now. Yeah, yeah. Bruce. You've got to buy five of everything five motors, five ESCs. It's just the thing. I've got lots of four motors everywhere. No, I never ever buy five motors, and I should start doing that. I should learn from my mistakes, but I don't learn. <laughs> You definitely should buy five. Uh, man, I'm actually, I, gonna, I'm, I'm hopefully going to order the new Emacs S because I love Emacs. I've got Emacs on all my quads. Yeah, well, one. we just got them in. Um, I was supposed to bring some back with me and test them on the front bench uh, tonight, uh, but I've totally forgot to bring them with me. So I'll do that next week instead. I'm um, here. They're pulling about thirteen fifty on a Dow four uh, five by four on a two blade. Uh, try braid. Try braid. Um, right, okay. I've, I've, I thought they were actually pulling a little bit less. I've seen someone do a thrust test and they were a bit less. Um, so, you know, I like to do my own test though to make sure. Yeah, it's always best to do it on your own. But I think this was uh, Engineer X who done it. 13, I'm sure he posted it was Dow Prop 1350. You sh- shouldn't be it's listening crazy. to him. Crazy. You know, we, we, we're friends with... Um, quad mcfly you should be listening to him and him alone <laughs> you can't just listen to one it's nice to have different opinions from different people isn't it so uh, but, when, when, when hbi does his tests i will watch his as well yeah consistent data though same thrust stand same esc same conditions it's hard though isn't it like that. Sa- sam same man cave <laughs> Well, that's how all of mine are done. I mean, for the next one, the only thing that's going to change for the first time ever is the battery. I'm going to use the AC uh, LiPos, because I used to use the Nanotech 1300s, um, but they're a bit old now, and people have moved on and using different batteries, so I'll use an AC 1500 next time. That's have the you got one? going to change in, in my things, in my test. The ESC stays the same, you know, in the same bench. It's still sat there. It doesn't move. It stays on that bench. So it should be the same results, or better, or worse, whatever. How did you get into the hobby? Um, so I was doing HBI cars. 
And as I say, I broke the ASC and it was too much money. And I was like, I just, I, I don't want to do that. I want, I want a hobby that's a little bit cheaper if I break something on it. Because every time you took one of these cars out, you were breaking it and it was costing you money. Uh, especially if you're running the, the nitro over the electric, um, you know, that cost an absolute fortune. It was messy, smelly, um, noisy, and people were starting to not um, like me using it in the park. So I wanted to do something else. And I remember always watching, um, there was a movie called FX, I think it was. It was about a guy with special effects, and he was flying a small helicopter indoors. And I always thought, wow, I want a helicopter. So I started looking at helicopters and thinking, okay, which one shall I get? And that's when um, I heard about drones and things, and there was the, the GAWI at the time. And I thought, oh, I'll get one of these GAWI drones. They look amazing. And just as I was about to purchase it, I heard about the Phantom, uh, Phantom 1 being released. So I've done a little bit of research on it, and I was like, yeah, they, they, they seem quite cool. Uh, quadcopters um, ended up posting a little video of one hovering outside their shop, um, and I was like, that's it, that's what I want. So I got in touch with them and made sure I got the first one uh, that, that, that was coming in. I ordered it straight away, and it was to the point that I was so excited, I couldn't wait for the next day delivery, and they said, yeah, they're, they're coming in, they're on the way now, and I was like, I'll be outside your house, I'll be there to get it. And sure enough, <laughs> I was there, and, and I got the first one in the UK, and... I was rushing home, <laughs> and the missus is like, we've got to go Ikea. I'm like, no, I want to get home and start doing videos with this thing. And I remember sitting there in Ikea. She'd gone in, and I'm opening up the box and just touching it all and playing with all this brand-new drone, and it was really, really exciting. So I, I, I got into it as well because um, – well, I got into RC because of my leg. I had a motorbike crash. I used to like to ride motorbikes, and then I needed a hobby I could do sitting down. So remote controls was much easier for me than uh, and safer uh, to do than you know, some, some of the other hobbies out there. So that's why I got into the RC, done the cars, and then went to the to the drones. Um, that's basically how I got into it, really. Now, how long before you got forward of the Phantom One? Not not really that long. No, no, it was it was it was, it was quite long actually. Thinking about it because it didn't have FPV on there. You had to stick a GoPro two, I think it was, on the bottom. Yeah, that's it. The Jello. There was lots of issues. So I was always doing workarounds to try and fix all the issues. And then it was like, well, I want more range. What can I do? So it was how to modify or stick a new radio in there. So I was modifying, um, putting Futaba T8Js in there so you could do a mile range and things. And then it snowballed from there then because people were like, yeah, I want more range so they would watch the video and, and do it. And then I think of something else new to do and then start my first FPV experience. Uh, and, and that was unreal, le learning to fly FPV. Um, and it's, it just snowballed from there, really. Was your point? Same as me. That's exactly all I done. Got the got that the, got the Phantom One FPV'd it. Yeah. Watched all your stuff. Didn't do the Futaba stuff. Couldn't afford it. But just um, ended up finding out you could turn the uh, TX over on the Phantom and turn that dial up. Yeah. Yeah. On the yeah. back to give it more range. <laughs> it was, and, it was, uh, yeah. it was great in those days because there was all these little holes in the back and things, and nobody knew it was like, oh, what if I do that? No, no, I didn't. It might ruin the, the settings or something. So nobody. Yeah, it was it. FPV. Yeah. So it was, it was exactly. really good times then. It was. I enjoyed that. I bought a Phantom 1, Phantom 2, and I've still got a Phantom 3, which I enjoy flying now. I haven't flown it for about a month and a half, but. It's still such a good machine, and now DJI have brought out the uh, Phantom Four. Is it Pro? And yeah, then Inspire about, Two. Inspire Two, and last month the, the the Mavic as well. I flew the Mavic today. It's a really good little machine. Quite quite like it, but um, whether I need one or not, I don't know. Hmm. I I Justine just she loves the Mavic, man. That's all that comes up in my like suggestions. She, yeah, yeah, she's all about that. The, I mean, GoPro Karma that got recalled. How mental is that? Yeah, it's going. Uh, yeah, and I think they called that Karma because it was supposed to be Karma against DJI, wasn't it? Yeah, but that just oh. didn't work, did it? That's a bit of a shame. It, apparently, the reports, the 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 news on those that it, they just fall out of the sky. Oh, that's that's the issue. Apparently, that's the official. By the way, it falls out of the sky. Oh, why don't they send these things out for testing? Yeah, yeah. Well, DJI used to do that in the early days. They would send the machines out to dealers, to people that knew what they were doing, and then they would uh, beta test them and, 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 and give feedback. But now, 
they just do all their own thing and then send it to you know a, a, a someone like I Justine or Casey Neistat or Casey, or Casey who just flies over New York and doesn't give a monkeys. I know, I know. Um, but I'm he... trying not to mention him. <laughs> like, sorry, I, but... I watch I watch his videos because you know he's a interesting, fun guy and everything, and he gets so lucky. He's such a jammy son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. just am I allowed to say bitch? Yeah. Why not? We I got I got in trouble once at, at like a little function after a wedding and they had a dog, male dog, and I went, Ah, oh, Maxi, you son of a bitch. And everyone was really horrified and then I went, It is true. It's true. Yeah. He it is was a, son a dog, of a it bitch. wasn't a bitch, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, but his son was a mother. <laughs> The mother was a bitch, and son of a bitch. Off track again, as usual. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's a miracle. I had, a, I had a plot. No, I had, I had a message. I am. I'm slowly getting back to there. Of um, oh god, uh, Gary, Gary Ken, and he was just like, I thought the show had finished. I thought you'd put your mouth, you, you know, your foot in your mouth again, and like got in trouble, and there was all heads were rolling. You know, like you totally done something, and there's no more show. You've been cancelled, and I was like, "No, uh, good news. The editor has come back." Good so, because we're um, behind like five episodes. So sorry, six. people. We are behind about six episodes, but they are on their way out to SoundCloud, etc. The good news is I fixed everything. I've got a pile of stuff that's fixed. All I've got to do is sit around and flash everything, depending on what everyone wants flashed so yeah so what are you flying at the moment rich what did you take to korea do you want to talk about korea yeah no. I, I only fly one frame now and that's the x hover um r5 lx um i got tired of switching between fra frames or having um say three different frames when i go to a race and everyone feels different everyone has a slightly different setup and uh, slightly mm. different btx and things like that so i just went you know what i'm going to standardize my whole fleet so I've got about five or six now, uh, of the X-Hovers. Uh, the only difference being is the motor KV. So it depends on the course and the track and things. Then I'll switch up the um, the, the props to match and, and use the the, the, the the right machine uh, that's going to be best for that course, really. And then, obviously, if uh, a deck one, uh, it's easier to just pick one up and take another one out of the box and, and get going and fix the other one during a bit of downtime. Because uh, sometimes at some races you, the turnaround can be quick. Sometimes it's quite quite long, so you've got time to fix stuff and that. Yeah. Um, I just I just don't like having to fix something um, out in you know in the pits, and then uh, the first chance you get to test it is in your next race. Um, and and you know you could you might not fix it you know as well as you think you've fixed it, and then you have a problem, and in the end you've ruined that race. That um, gives me well. That makes me rage quit. Then I get really fed up of everything. And I just like want to go home. So it's just easier for me to go right. Another quad. I know it's the same. Take that. Fly that. Fix the other one in my in in, in the spare time. So I'm not stressing myself out. It so. is stressful, isn't it? How do you feel about um, if if everything got standardised and everyone had to fly the same thing? Um, I, I would be happy about that. I, I've got no problem doing that at all. If, if everyone had to say fly. You know, QAV with these motors and them ESCs and and that flight controller and a, a particular battery. I, I'd be happy with that. I, I would. Uh, it'd be very interesting to see as well the difference it makes between the pilots. Would some pilots yeah. start to you know? Would, would you see someone else win instead of Luke and Gary? Um, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it would be nice. I like the way um, is it DRL? They they make you yeah. it, don't they? They make you use all the same quads. You can set up the machine with the PIDs and rates that you want, so it flies the way you want to, but keep the physical stuff all the same. I'd like that. Yeah, I think it's a good idea because it's, um, I mean, it's got its good and bad points, isn't it? I mean, people who are just starting, who are good at flying and racing and who haven't got um, six quads to take with them, yeah. only one, it's going to be better for them. I mean, yeah. is that the norm now, to make six quads? <laughs> it's starting to go that way. I mean, the first time I seen it was, uh, say, about three three months ago uh, in Chulchon in um, Korea. The first time I went there. Who was it? Uh, Kim Tang and Johnny, I think it was, uh, Johnny FPV. They opened up their boxes and had identical quads all just stacked in, and I was like, that's what I need to do. I've not seen anyone doing it before, so... 
I didn't want to do it. I, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't want to do it. But now, yeah, I, I've I've done it to all of my quads. It's it's the money, isn't it? Really, like well, for people. Still, yeah, yeah, totally. I sold a lot of stuff. I had a wall full of quads that I I didn't fly that much, and I just went. You know what? I'll get rid of all this, and and because it's just gonna get, you know it's gonna depreciate anyway. Um, and and do it that way. I didn't actually have the money. I just sold everything I had, and then started from from yeah. a fresh. That's 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 the way to go. Yeah, I'm skinning. What? <laughs> what are HPI knuckles? Knuckles. Yeah, HPI knuckles are fifteen quid and made of cheese. All right, so that, I think that's the bit where the um, the prop shaft goes down uh, to like a like a cup, I think, and they they do wear out. Yeah, HPI. Oh, I can hear someone in the background. Um, yeah, well done. Uh, yeah. When will the batteries catch up uh, to the demand? I mean the amp demand. Motors and ESCs are way out there. Batteries kind of on the uh, kind of hold back, in my couple, opinion. It's got to be a couple of years, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, hard one to answer. Nobody really knows. We need we uh, uh, we need a leap in technology. I thought graphene was going to be it, but it doesn't seem to be. No. What about you? Don't you have a wall of quads to sell? <laughs> he just said that, and he sold them all. Yep, sold them all, and then bought all fresh. Ah, all fresh, the same. Yeah, yeah. That's Dan Daniel X Hover, isn't it, man? What's it like getting parts though for that? Because he's out in the USA. Uh, I've got a good relationship with Daniel. I've I've had a few of his quads in the past, um, and he's just a really nice guy. It's easy. It's easy to get stuff out there. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem at all. Yeah. Are you not getting stung with any bloody? Uh, I just got stung with a sixty-eight quid import tax for f bloody free dodos, which I bought uh, four months ago. Oh no! Yeah, I, I get stung all the time. In fact, I just paid the FedEx bill on another two then. And what's really annoying is that uh, the charge was four pounds, and then after they put all their charges on, it was up to sixteen or eighteen pounds. I can't remember. It's, it fries my brain. It really does. Yeah. I know my my bill now for my tax import tax was more than the three boards I purchased from America. Yeah, yeah, I, I do get stung a bit. It's, it's, it's a it's a do about it. It's a bugger, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. a joke. It's a, it's a, it is. It's daylight robbery. Is it going to get worse with Brexit? Oh, shush you. Out the comes the tinfoil hat. <laughs> oh, just, oh, here we go. Oh, he's, he's got, he's at Rick. If you were uh, aware. You've actually got the real flat earth on yeah. your hat. Yeah, look, there's a little tinfoil hat. It says flat earth on it. <laughs> the lizard people are taking over. This is the segment of the show. Tony, I've had some questions in about you and Flat Earth. Look, I'll pull, point all my stuff to Eric Dubai. Look at his YouTube channel. Yeah, but it's no um, fun like that. So, Tony, how does it work? Is the sun just a light bulb and is it swinging about? That's from Fab. Do you really think that the Earth is <laughs> right, revolving at a thousand mile an hour traveling through space and time and all everything sticks to it with a gravity and all that bollock. it's everything it's a bollock. the higher you go it's still flat you put a level in a water it's flat 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 look at eric dubai it's flat the earth is flat when you realize do your research you will come back to me and go actually that guy's right Sorry, and that's hey, enough of that Guy, this is the part of the show where we ignore the guests and argue between ourselves. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> what do you think? What shape do you think the Earth is? Uh, I don't say oblique spear. <laughs> it's flat, Rich. Look at when you when oh, you go flying. Look at the mental. Horizon. Don't listen to him. <laughs> it's flat. Right. Anyway, any more <laughs> questions? Korea. How was? Uh, well, no, actually, Dubai. We Dubai. haven't spoke about that because I, I ran into you. Was it the gadget show? I think it was. Yeah, and you you gave me like a little bit of a little bit of a lowdown and and told us about the cameras and you had to keep the 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 streaming cameras going, plugging in one battery before carry on. 
Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. So that was a bit stressful. A normal pit stop. In fact, we hadn't even practiced pit stop or, or anything anyway, so it was already stressful enough. But one mistake in that pit stop, you would um, if you unplugged any power from the, uh, the the machine, then the HD system would turn off, and it would take about two minutes approximately for it to turn back on and broadcast again. So they said, if you do that, if you unplug, then you'll disqualify from the whole competition. So there was there was a there was a lot of stress there all of a sudden for just a change in a battery. And um, they said, oh, we, we'll give you a connector so when you land, you can plug in what they called the house power into the quad so there was power constantly on there so then you could change your battery. But when we were um, – these were left out in the rain and things. We had a really bad storm out there. But when we tried to plug it in, it was really freaking the quads out. Um, and the flight controllers, ESCs were all doing crazy things when we plugged it in. So we were like, this isn't safe. You know, um, we, we, we don't like it. So we had two – XT60s on there, so you could land, plug an XT60 in, and then quickly take the uh, the other one off. Because again, putting a fresh battery in with the old battery would would surge into that old battery and the battery that's just been used, and uh, cause problems again with the the, the things like OSD and uh, and the flight controller again. So um, it was a little bit stressful just just because you're you're the pit stop guy. Luke Luke was was flying, and if I mess up, I ruin it for him. So um, yeah. that was the scary thing. I didn't want to ruin it for for anybody else. So me and uh, Dominic Clifton uh, decided to team up and we would do it and talk uh, to each other whilst we were doing it. We had our procedure that we would do uh, just, to, just to stop any mistakes. And two people being there, you know, two people is better than one. You can spot the, if the other guy's about to make a mistake and, and, and so on. So it worked out really well. Um, I think our last pit stop, was uh, was maybe three seconds longer than than it should have been really, uh, but we were just double checking everything, and and Luke caught up and, and got back up in front anyway. Uh, so the pit stops were, were were new; they they were quite good. Yeah, because didn't you go out there to try and apply and and qualify? Well, we were told um, before leaving, yeah, you could go, you could go and um, have a go at qualifying and things. And when we got there, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case at all, unfortunately. I would have loved to have flown on the track and things, but no. Um, we did have an internal uh, thing where all the guys were, were timed. In fact, I ended up running that, so I didn't fly at, at all uh, when I was there. I just ended up helping out and uh, being a tech and doing the timing and things. So we done a an internal, uh, we done a track and then done an internal race. I was timing everybody. We got all the fastest times, and those were the guys that we then chose to go through to do the um, the indoor course with lit, that was lit up with all the LEDs. Yeah. So there was a few pilots that did go and um, didn't get a chance to fly in the race uh, th- themselves because they didn't make it through our own internal um, race. You know, the, the times weren't mm. good. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, it was a funny a way. A lot of arguing it. and stuff I hear, and yeah, not, not, a lot of a lot of. Th- the, the, the we heard things about the money and like not getting paid on time and you had to front it all yourselves and, and things like that yeah yeah well um we we didn't have to worry about too much about the money because that was all down to our manager and they were sorting all that out um and we were just going to you know do what we could do and um um and just try and um, do what we could do on the money that we had and then just borrow money if we had to and that's that. That was the case. We had to borrow money. Um, Richard Richard helped us out because they changed the dates as well uh, during the final. I think it was. Um, we were due to fly out, and then they had to change everyone on our team. They had to, they had to buy all new flights for them for you know like twenty four hours later or twelve hours later, and it cost like twenty odd grand just to do that for all of us. Wow! So Richard paid for that out of his own cash at the time to keep us all there. Oh, uh, that's crazy. <laughs> But yeah, so, the, prize, the prize money everyone was waiting for as well, um, and and people are still waiting to get paid for it. Naughty, naughty, isn't it? I, I, I we we keep hearing this in America. In like, we spoke to quite a lot of people, and they keep saying that people keep giving it the talk, and then they don't pay out, and it's starting to really annoy everyone. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's going to be people out there that are going, do you know what, I'm going to be very serious about this, I'm going to train hard, I'm going to use my own money to get out here, and I'm going to try and compete, because then if I win the money, that's going mm. to sort me out for the rest of the year to be able to compete and, and live, basically. Uh, so when, when you get the, uh, the, the the guys that, you know, the, the, the people that are running the races not paying out quick enough, then 
the the, the guys do struggle. It's mm. not fair, is it? It really isn't. Yeah. So we went we went to Korea. Uh, I came back on Sunday night, and we had a couple of hundred quid between us because uh, we went as a team. Um, myself, uh, James Bowles, and uh, Aaron. <clears throat> We only had a couple of quid between us, and when we got to the hotel, they said, "Oh, it's going to be three hundred thousand And we were all looking at each other, going, "We can't. Know. What are we going to do, guys? That's all our money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we got we no, eat. no money to eat or anything." And then uh, we were like, "Can't we get all in the same room?" They were like, "No, no, no." We were like, "No, we can sleep on the floor. Give us another blanket." We were we were on a proper proper small budget yeah. when we got out there. I mean, we got off at the airport not knowing what bus to get because we needed to get on the bus for an hour and a half to get to the hotel. We, we didn't know what was going to happen. It all worked out well in the end. Um, uh, <laughs> Jab and Aaron shared a bed together. I had a single bed to myself. We all got in the same room, and um, it, it worked out well. Um, but yeah, some guys are doing it on a small budget, and then some you've got guys doing it on a on a on a really big budget, mm. getting air diems, getting decent money per day, getting paid for being there. Yeah, so um, I don't know. It's it's hard when you're not getting paid. It is. It it does sound like a a little, a little bit of a shit, but well, it's, it's all good uh, that you went out. The thing is, we we love doing what we what, what we're doing. So when you're so passionate it. about it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. That's it. You do, you do take sleeping with James Bowles on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got some pictures of them. But they're not I'm not allowed to show you. <laughs> no, we're lying in bed together. <laughs> we, I think we should have one of them posted out. This is a sneaky one. Um, I can see Matthew's thing there. How come none of uh, that was sorted if you had sponsors to pay for you guys to go over there? So we did have a couple of sponsors to pay for us. Um, and uh, we were asking for the money. You know, it's, we're about to leave. Can we have the money? Can we get the money? We're, you know, we're getting on the plane. It's literally getting on the plane and sponsors hadn't given, given us money. We were hoping to get there and the money to be transferred and stuff like that. And um, believe it or not, we got there and, and I think it was one of the sponsors didn't even bother to reply to any of us after saying they're going to pledge this money to us and being in contact with us constantly yeah they they sent us nothing so we were like wait right, we're already short on funds and now they've dropped out um and we, we were we we're not getting a lot of money from these sponsors at all um korea themselves the um the korean it's actually the korean government paid for the flight which really helped you know that's a big expense when it's yeah. like 500 odd pounds each yeah. um so so um we only had a couple of hundred pounds I mean, when we're saying sponsors here, you think, oh, they'll get this paid for, they get that. We had nothing. We had to wear our own T-shirts from, from our last race in Ibiza, which we've only got one T-shirt. Um, you know, we don't have multiple things. So it's, no. it's, our team's a very small team, but we, we get by with what we've got and we seem to do all right but with it as well. It's nice that you, you, you're you coming across and saying like that because people on the outside go, oh, look at them, look, they're going out there, you know, they've got this, they've got that. Sponsor. Doing all the cocaine, they, go, they get yeah. hookers <laughs> sent to their hotel room yeah, whilst no, these no. two guys sharing a single bed <laughs> night, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. HBI guy, bloody, he's <laughs> right off it. <laughs> Just... No, honestly, I think some people will be surprised on on how little money we actually have to to, to do what we're what we're doing. And you know, it, the exploits those these guys um, uh, have got plenty of money, plenty of sponsors, plenty of backing, and plenty of help and experience. Um, where where we're going out on our own, just 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 us three lads, not knowing where we're going, yeah. how we're getting there, and everything. It was a little more exciting, um, and, and yeah. you know, it it worked out really well, and it's made a give us a lot of memories. Yeah, that's and Aaron, that's Aaron placed. Aaron placed well. It was a good. It was a. It was a track that I would have liked. A big, big gates, fast. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I really enjoyed it this time. Last time I went there, I took um, the wrong quads. You know, they're all twenty three hundred kV with uh, the wrong props and things. And I was like, the guy with the fastest quads going to win here on this this particular track because it was very open compared to the track we, we went on this time. Um, yeah. and, and sure enough, that was the case. I mean, I just left the throttle full open last time, just kept on it, kept going round, and I just couldn't keep up with everyone, even though I was on full throttle. Uh, this time, um, I, I'd learned from that mistake, and as I say, I had different quads, different motors, so I could, you know, adjust for the track now. Um, so it made a real big difference. Um, and I always got kept getting put in the uh, races with, you know, Min Chan Kim, <laughs> Zach, uh, <laughs> um, all the fast all the fast people were in my group, and I was. I looked I at Aaron. I was like, I don't even awesome. recognize anyone in Aaron's group. I was like, Aaron, come on, swap with me. He's like, no, nope, no. So yeah, that's I got, my excuse. Yeah, I got surprised. 
he had an easy pass. <laughs> Min Chin Kim, that 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 kid is quick. How old is he? Is he younger than Benny? I think he's around the same age, isn't he? He's, he's same age. Yeah, yeah, he's taller than Benny now. They're, they're, they're both bloody quick, aren't they? Them too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's ridiculously quick. But the, the funny thing was, um, I don't know if, what it was this time. I don't know if it was because I couldn't understand what everyone was saying, so I wasn't really stressed out, you know, taking everything in. I was just kind of sat there in the moment. Um, yeah. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I was just listening out for the beeps. All right, look, it's time to go kind of thing. Where normally, I'm, like even at ICU, I'm sat there going, why am I doing this to myself? Because when I'm on the line, I get really like, stressed out. Yeah, I get really, that. really stressed out. Yeah. I, quite, I, can, I can tell you're stressed out. I'm always like... Is there anything I can do to like chill him out other than drug him? I'm like, Smokey, have you got any of those painkiller things? Like, you know, like I'm the same quick, quick don't hold him down. Um, Much the same. Like, there's people who really look like they really enjoy it. Like Benny just go does a race and then go lands and goes, oh, that was fucking easy. You lot of crap. Yeah. And then like I'm there stressing. I was there the night before at the national stressing. Oh, better have a whiskey. See if I can do this. And like. The build up to, to it and then the boop, boop, yeah. boop, and then you crash on the first gate and you go, Oh, you idiot. If I was flying with my mates, I'd be in the lead and all that yeah. lot. And you, yeah, it, it, it is a lot of that stress, really does do it, really does it for me as well. Yeah. I know I exactly I'm what you mean. Listening to that startup tune, you know, the beep, 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 because when I start hearing that, that's when my heart starts pumping. I'm like, yeah, oh my yeah. God, it's happening. It's about to happen. Ah! So yeah, I need to like condition myself to those beeps or something. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to start playing them while I go to sleep. What, what's yeah. it called? Is it Pavla's Just... dog or something? Pavla? Pavlo? No, Pavla. You know, like, you know, he, he did the experiment. He rings bells and then feeds the dogs and the dogs, he rings the bell and the dog oh, starts right, salivating. Yeah. Is it? I, can't, I, can, I can never remember what it's called. Maybe we should train you guys like that, you know, like the beeps go off and then you get to look at uh, something nice, like cake or something. Yeah, the you know? go off, though, and, then, and then we 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 get palpitations, and I need to go for a like wee and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that, that's one thing I'm, I'm I definitely do do. I have me nervous wee. I've got to run off and have a quick. I think it's our age, Rich. Yeah, no, 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 it's just nerves, just nerves. I'm, it's not me. Eh? <laughs> uh, no, they can't all be like you, Tone, marking, marking your prehistoric territory. <laughs> yeah, give me a <laughs> like, little. I remember I was, I was there, like you were running about, and someone crashed out and restarted the race, and I went and took your transponder off, and I was like, here you go. It's so, like you got plenty of time, and you ran back and forth before you actually went. Oh, actually, I've got enough time to put it on. And I was just like, uh, you know, I'm trying to help, but you just wind yourself up a bit more. It's you, you know, it's hard. Pleasure. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not easy. Like them beeps will haunt me. Do you know that? Do you know when you die? Do you know that bit <laughs> where they say you hear or we'll have flashbacks? I'm going to hear beep. beep yeah. Beep, beep. <laughs> Uh, gates I, I'm the worst at I just can never get through gates I'm so bad at them right. unless I'm going right. the wrong way round a track then I'm great yeah let's not talk about that <laughs> <laughs> um, oh god what what else has been uh, what's happening uh, do you want to mention the uh, TVS um, Instagram we spoke about that earlier yeah yeah <laughs> If I, I'm uh, well. I'm probably starting to get a name for myself for rage quitting. I rage quit all the time. If something's not going my way, it's getting thrown or something, and I'm yeah. out about it <clears throat> just to get my frustrations out. I'm not trying. I'm not naturally nasty or anything. But you know, it's like when you've been trying to work on something electronics for for, for so long, you spent hours on. You're like, why is it not working? I've done nothing to it. It's not working. And yeah, with, that happened with me with TBS with the Power Cube, and I I, I rage <laughs> in a big way. With my uh, Instagram rage quit review. <laughs> have you got oh, the link for it, man? I was wetting myself when you oh, got it's it. so funny. Like, have you got, is it HPI or is it that HPI guy on Instagram? It's so funny. I remember seeing that. Yeah. This, you know, this uh, TBS. Um, yeah, no, well, 
This is BS. This is BS. That's BS. And I just started loving them. Throwing it. And yeah, man. I right. the window. I threw it that hard. There's still a dent in the, in the metal things on the window. <laughs> oh, my word. Like, you know, it's just something else, man. We've all been Brilliant. there, though. But I feel like Brilliant. I'm the only one that has these problems. Like, for example, like these ZMX motor problems. I'm like, look, this why this is brand new. Why is it not working? I've done nothing to it. They said they've updated it. It's a new version, blah, blah, blah. And nobody else is having a problem. Why is it always me? So then I rage quit and post about it and start throwing things. If, but, if anything, man. Just, if, but funny, everyone comes out the woodwork then and starts messaging me going, oh, I've got that problem. Yeah, I've got this. I've got that. And I'm like, well, why is nobody talking about it? Why is everyone just still buying the crap? Yeah, well, a lot of people are ashamed that they, they break stuff all the time. I just seem to set light to things. As soon, as soon as someone puts a camera on me building something, up it goes on in smoke. Yeah, it does. And then it. they start making gifts of it. Like It, it, it happens. I was actually live on Facebook, sit, sit, sitting over there. The guys were watching with me. And I was like, all right, finally, I've built it. Let's go. And I plugged it in. It's went... Pfft. They said, oh, it's going it's to blow up. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I plugged it in and it blew up. If that's just part of, of what happens. Every day, I build quads every day. You know, I built one today and I was like, okay, I've powered it up. Okay, if it's good. It's in stages, right? Okay, I've got to arm it now. Let's hope it doesn't freak out. I've got the props on the right yeah. way. The motor's going the right way. It's just part of Even it. Even that's stressful, isn't it? Yeah, you just have a brain fart and you'll forget something and you'll be outside, right, let's go, boom, and it'll rip itself apart because you yeah. forgot to turn one motor going the right way. So, yeah. you know, it's totally natural for us to, to smash these things up and no one should be afraid or, of that or even deny it because it's going to happen to everyone. It is going to happen to everyone. So, I, Rick, I, you, you mentioned earlier that you were waiting outside uh, quadcopters.co.uk for your... A drone. So you weren't working there at the time because you work there now, don't you? Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't there. No, um, I was. I was just talking about it. I did, hadn't even had the machine, the Phantom One, and I was just like, um, I, I've got nothing to do. I'm sitting here excited. Let's talk about it. So that's all I could do until I got it. And then uh, when they said, yeah, the shipment's just arrived in the UK. Now we're waiting for it to be delivered. And I was like, well, I'm gonna. There's the shipment. There's me. There's your house. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go there and got there. And I was like, right, give it here. I'm not waiting till tomorrow. Next day delivery. I want it now. So yeah. I, I couldn't so wait. How, how did you get the job through 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 them guys? They just that's he's enthusiastic. Let's employ him. I guess so, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was always up there then for for extras. Oh, I need a battery. Oh, I need some props. Or or they would have something in you know a video transmitter when I wanted to start doing FPV uh, things like that. So they had all the parts. So I just thought, well, I know these guys now. I'm just going to keep going to them. And it, and it just kind of uh, went on from there. And then they were like, well, we're getting busy. We need some help. And you know what you're talking about. So. Come and help us, and that's how well. That's how it all began. So you, so you were in another job full time, and then you just went with them full time, or did you start off? No, so... no, because um, it was during the time when I was uh, come in and out of hospital because I had the motorbike crash, uh, so I, I, I couldn't actually go to work or anything because my, yeah. my normal work meant I had to be on my feet all the time. Well, if you're quad building, you can sit down. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's how. That's I just rolled into that instead. And you're still there now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loving it. Cool, cool. Jack, have you still got your hat on? No, I've put it back on. Why? Uh, I'm not talking about uh, anymore. Yeah, I, know, I just like wearing the hat. Yeah. You know uh, that symbol there is the um, symbol for Flat Earth, don't you, from the, no. the government? I remember it your is. first flip on the 350 QX quad, lol, tricky tube. Tricky tube. Yeah, I remember that. I was very nervous as well because um, it was a brand new quad. The uh, I was funny enough, I was looking at one of them today. We've got one up on the wall. Um, and it was such an amazing flying machine. It would flip really quick. And uh, yeah, that I remember doing them and then trying flipping it in, in FPV and things. They were my first line of sight flips as well using that machine. Which was, you know, about the same size as a Phantom. It was a 350 size uh, machine. That is crazy, man. I um, I, I'll show you what I've been, I've been working on. Hang on, I've uh, gone back to, back to my roots. If you guys carry on talking. 450 stuff. I, Rick, I remember watching your 1600 foot, which is one mile. No, 1600 meter, one mile flight with your TBS Discovery, where you used a 2.4 gig for video. This thing's massive. Now look at that. That What's is that? massive. 450, isn't it? That looks bigger. What size is that, Jack? 
I have no idea. And that means getting the ruler. Um, hang on. It is roughly uh, 30 and, oh, hang on, sorry, hang on, wait, 30 by that bolt and another 21 millimetres, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, don't worry. Um, yeah, I, uh, swinging in eight inch props and um, it's running uh, INAV. As I'm getting a little bit bored of mini quads. Well, it, all of this goes in phases, and I can see it happening. Uh, it's just like fashion, you know, one thing comes in, another thing goes, and it comes back in again. It's going to happen with the, the, the quads and stuff. You know, people are going back to wings and things, and uh, including myself now, you know, I've got uh, two two wings uh, and a Bixer. Um, yeah. yeah what, what's, what have you got back there? Also, are you still flying for Tarva, you animal? Yeah, yeah, of course. Tarver, man. I'm around for Tarva all day, every day. None he of that stuff. This boss forever. <laughs> That's it, yeah. I had to go with yeah, people no. the day. I was like, what is this? This is horrible. Yeah. yeah. Plane wise, uh, there's a TBS cappy down there that I, I got the foam for free, so that's the only reason I'm using TBS. Um, I watched your launch of that. It's very, very good. It's good, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> Perfect launch. <laughs> Straight into I can believe you. If I was there, <laughs> I would have rugby tackled you. Bad <laughs> leg and all. I just turned around at the camera like, did that just happen? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give Mean up. Meanwhile, electronics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <It> doesn't work. <laughs> that doesn't. Well, one it's, time TBS got it right. I've just got into wings. I've always, always wanted to fly since I was a kid. I always wanted to fly. I never thought I could ever fly. And then, like, DJI come out, and I was like, oh, this is so good. It almost flies itself. I can do yeah. this. And now I, like, flew, started flying Acro. I, I started flying a mini quad. I got someone to build me one. I, like, was nearly gave up so many times. And then got the hang of it with stabilise ace mode. And then I got chatting to Metal Danny and he said, go into the middle of a field, sit there, go on Acro. You'll love it when you get it. And I like got through about 10, 15 batteries and then loved it. And yeah. now like, I'm on the same. Like I'm flying a wing now. I've got a uh, wing, Gabe, Gabe Robinson. He's like 16-year-old kid. He's really good at flying works. Uh, it all in flying and then i bought a tbs cappy because one of my mates did because it can hold a, a gopro for the footage as well mm. but i've got mine on a 2s setup a 5000 milliamp 2s setup okay yeah mine's on 3s it's just it's so light like i can fly like five mile an hour yeah it's ridiculous yeah. It's, it's, but, apparently it's not a very good flying uh wing uh especially not for a beginner anyway no apparently not but breaks off it yeah, well, I've just glued the front bit uh, back on yesterday. Hey. <laughs> Destroyed it. Um, but, it, you know, this this thing, I don't know if it's just me, uh, it just stalls all the time, and there's no getting out of it. Really? I think, <coughs> I think, it, I think it's the fine. shape of the foil. I think it's also because I'm used to flying mini quads, so I try and do a flip or a roll like a mini quad. I need to do it differently. Yeah. Yeah. It is and a bit also, Yeah. Also, if you hang around with people who do fly fixed wing, they rip the granny out of you. They're just like, you, you guys just dance on the throttle because we, we're like that all the time, up, down, up, down, up, down. Yeah. And they're like, look, there's three modes to a throttle. <laughs> if in doubt, full out, full out, and then three quarters and mid, nothing else. It's just yeah. those. You <coughs> might as well get a, a sewing machine foot pedal as your throttle because it's yeah. just on or off. And that's apparently that's how you fly. Like it or not, but um, I really enjoy my wing. But what I like is the relaxing. twenty minutes flying. Yeah, the twenty minutes of sitting there exploring. Like either you know, with a mini quad, you're two minutes full whack round the track, blah, 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 down. Yeah, yeah. Change battery. Like now, I'm out fifteen minutes out one way, fifteen minutes back. I'm I'm really, really, really enjoying it. But I'm really enjoying it when it's a proper calm day. Like no win whatsoever. Well, you know them days when you just get it and it's just nothing. Yeah. Well, yeah. we planned a big a big trip and we got a whole bunch of us and we went up to uh, Ribble Viaduct. And we thought, yeah, we're going to fly up there. And uh, we got there and we were like, we can't even see it. Um, we, we, we didn't think we were in the right place, to be honest. Uh, eventually, all of the, the fog cleared and this massive viaduct appeared next to us like, 
oh, FPV heaven, you know, for the for these quad yeah. heads, right, for the planes. And then all the other lads are like, no, nah, that's still a bit misty. I was like, get this thing in the air, 5.8 <laughs> for the video, just get it going. And it, and it, and it, I was the only one that flew that day. It was really it was really good. I only risked the um the the cappy. Uh, I've got an X6 there. I didn't really want to risk that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, on. go on. Oh, okay, carry on. It's a totally different experience uh, flying the, 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 the planes, um, and I'm glad that I've decided to do it. I was really worried about it because of flight controllers and things, and things that I'm not um, used to. You know, I'm used to like NASAs and uh, you know flight controllers for, for quads, and I was like, how do planes work? And I was too scared to, to do it, and now I've, I've actually had to go. It's actually really easy. I Because um, I'm... Uh, have you got a flight, a flight controller in your cappy then? Not in the cappy, no, that's just, you know, the, the radio straight to the yeah. kind of thing. But in the X6, there is a flight controller, um, you know, for, for return to home and, and, and for, um, I can't remember what it's called now, where it levels itself, basically, in the air, so you don't yeah. have to stay on the sticks and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I've just put 1.2... No, uh, you can't... Uh, am I still there? Have I gone? Yeah, you broke up. You said you broke up. You said you put 1.3 gigahertz or something? Yeah, I'll put 1.2 uh, video on it now, so I should be able to get some decent range out of the X6. The, the plan is to launch. You know where that, that video you were talking about with the TBS, where I, uh, I fly the TBS across the, the marshland? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's England, basically. And right across all that marshland, there's a river and things, and then it's North Wales. So technically, I'd be flying from, from one country to another, so I was thinking of doing that. That would be good. <laughs> I think. I'd, uh, I'd definitely enjoy watching that because I'm just starting to get into long, long distance stuff now. And I was thinking about buying the um, TBS stuff, but it's all so bloody dear. You need to. Especially when, when Jack says, oh, look, we can get a four watt <laughs> thing <laughs> off eBay where you can, don't, you know. Don't tell people about that. <laughs> I know, we're, we're experimenting. It's not going to work. That's, that's Look. There's two reasons why I've built the the ghetto copter. Um, it's from a this um, a flight test electro hub, which is I, the only thing I can say is that it is a good. It's got a good power distribution board. I don't know whether anyone remembers these. Hang on, I've got one and I hate them. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The um. Oh God, what were they called? Uh, yeah, the Abuse Mark power distribution boards. Oh, yeah. For a dyslexic, <laughs> these are I a nightmare. Them. Oh, my word. I'm going to nail one to a plane and fly it and then switch <laughs> off the transmitter and let it just crash into Wales. <laughs> and, let them, and then on note, it will just say, I don't know, it will just say like, I love Trump. Please set fire to me, or something. I don't know. Like I just, oh, it's, it's the look worst. How, see, look how much that's changed in what six months from that to what we've got now. Who thought that was a good idea? <laughs> I just honestly, oh, um, yeah. But you bought one. I bought one. I think I think someone gave it to yeah. me. Um, anyway, so yeah, the INAV as well. Uh, there's. I've been watching a series. I can't remember the guy's name, but I can I can Google it if anyone wants it, and I'll mention it next week's show. But there's this guy, and uh, with iNav, it gives you the ability to set waypoints, and you can use them in a wing as well. So you get the stealth stabilizing. You got GPS hold, where it kind of stays in its same position, and you got return to home, and you also can use a mission planner for. Um, Takes setting quite your a lot points. of the enjoyment out of flying, though, doesn't it? I mean, I like the fact that you could fly miles and then you can you can return to home, but I like the fun out of it. No, not for necessarily. Me. That's it's, for me. Yeah, you know, like admittedly, you'd still fly it on rate mode all the time and everything, but it's you know it, it's it's nice to have those features and use the self stabilization mode because. I don't know whether you, any of you guys have ever watched. You remember old flight tests? There's there's a flight test gremlin, and they fly out in a storm. I haven't seen that one. You no. haven't? Look for it, man. It's, I um, they, I've seen it. I've watched but, of flight tests. I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, check it out. Flight test gremlin's the channel. It was their little hidden channel for ages. And David and Chad Kappa 
go out and they the two the secret thing that they love doing is flying in a storm and there's massive storm in Ohio they're at the flight test house and they launch and they've got like I think it is a wing I can't remember no actually it was a plane and they launch it and they say like they love like it's a bit of a challenge but that's self-stabilizing you're able to use that to keep in the air for the storm yeah. so that helps you you know and like the yeah you've got the the gps like uh waypoint and stuff but that's that's a great thing for testing um you know testing things like you know the edge of your range where you haven't got any more headroom left and it snows and you can't get it back flick it on return to home comes back to you and you're not looking for your plane do you know what I mean? You don't have to use any of it. You can just do, you go straight to pass through yeah, that's and fly it normally. But instead of like amping up your systems all the time, um, you know, with, with, you know, like more milliwatt or, you know, bigger antennas and, and up in your power and that, you can have it so that if you do get to the edge of signal, you can switch the return to home and position hold for people like you who need people like like you tony um who need people to launch and stuff how awesome would it be to be able to launch brad launch uh get bradders to launch you you position hold so it flies around you above your head yeah, and then and you launch bradders and then put your goggles on and then it's just handy stuff that you'll never have to use isn't you know it's not like you get in your car and you're like, well, I've got a sunroof. I paid for this sunroof. I must use it. <laughs> yeah, Open it. All the snow starts coming in. You know, like, it's a, you know, it's like, it's there if you need it. And it's quite fun trying to get this stuff to work as well. And it's all in development. Rich, what 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 did you say you're going to use for 1.3 on video? Was that? Yeah, so I just uh, bought from Savella Zone or Savale Zone for the first time, and it was uh, the 1.2 video transmitter and a receiver. Um, that's what all the lads that I fly with use. Um, it's a more robust link, and they seem to be getting decent range with it. Uh, so I got it to 800 milliwatt as well. And so I should be able to get quite a decent range just on the standard uh, stock whips. Um, they're using patches and all these funky kind of antennas as well uh, to increase the range. Um, but I think I'll, for, for now the stock whips will do for me, and I'll, um, I'll I'll have a look around and maybe get a patch or something to go with it. Um, we were talking to Ivy Crazy, and he was saying his um, is it air screw is the best to have on a wing, but yeah. that is for five point eight, I suppose. So I don't know what it'd be on one point three. Isn't isn't one point three a military channel in this country? I think I think it's called one point three, but the it's actually it's it's it can go from lower than that, so it's like ten eighty and stuff, and it can go up to one point two and into one point three. So it depends. I thought the military was more three point three, wasn't it? Or, or that might be the police helicopter. I can't remember. Oh, I, I I'm not too sure. Um, Nine hundred uh, phone. I'm, I'm going to wait. Basically, I say things and then I wait for Daniel Upton to be like, no, you're an idiot. And then he takes his <laughs> mouth. So I can just say anything you like. Like, yeah, tone. Yeah, earth flat. <laughs> 15 <laughs> minutes <laughs> after the show. <laughs> um, Here we and say, yes, it is. It's not flat, you mental head case. <laughs> and not everyone's a lizard, people. And when Hillary Clinton the, did not old, throw then. up green eggs in her drink. What's that he's holding? Got something there. Uh, who was it? Someone asked uh, something. Kate Cokey Beast 1985 asked if it's a big antenna. So that's the size of the antenna. Uh, and that's a 5.8 antenna next to it. So almost twice the, the length, really. Almost. It's, it looks like a 5 dBi 2.4. Yeah. Rip, rip the plastic thing off, the shield, to see what's inside, if you don't mind. <laughs> Unless you don't want to break it, don't break it, Rich. Easy. You know, I like used it yet? <laughs> hang on, look. You, you can just ah, ah. See, that's what's in five point eight. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't really want to do that on this. No. <laughs> He's a, he hasn't flung it anywhere yet. I haven't even used it yet. I'll break it soon enough. Don't worry. All right. When you do, let us know. Will do. No problem. We well, need to know what's inside. Science. <laughs> Science. Have you, ever, have you ever flown a tricopter? 
Do you know what? No, I haven't. No. Uh, I, I almost I wanted to get one a long time ago in the early days when it was all KK two boards and Simon K flake and uh, Simon K ESCs and you know it was all hobby king stuff. Get as much hobby king stuff as you can and make something. And tricopters was something I did want to make, but I never got around to. There's nothing inside. It's flat. It's oh no, you're not <laughs> Na- Matthew Evans. You're not hollow earther, are you? There is uh, H, actually aliens what live underneath us. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so are you going to the drone show? Are you flying or are you just turning up? Or are you saying hello? Yeah, I'll be going. And I just looked to my left and I looked. This is my Conex quad. And this is how it's current state. Basically. So you've got a, oh, that's, so that's you've got good. A, you've got a couple of hours to get, to get that going then. <laughs> yeah. Mate, what are you using on that? Do HPI make hammers now? (laughs) Is that what you're using? (laughs) (laughs) The problem was... Is there a couple of different races, Rich? Yeah, so you've got the digital... There's an analog. Okay. You've got a digital race and an analog race. Yeah, yeah. So I've entered myself into both. Um, Yeah, see what happens with that. The problem I've got with the, the, the Connex at the moment, well, it's not the Connex, it's my goggles. My goggles are 16, no, they're not, they're 4 by 3 and the Connex is 16 by 9 So I get this weird, weird yeah. video, and uh, I need to get used to it. But I got in touch with uh, Vuzix, and they're going to send me out a headset. Uh, so I'm going to probably end up using that during the uh, the drone show digital race. Cool, cool, cool. We'll hopefully see you there. I think there's quite a few people going this year. Hopefully it'll be bigger than last year. Last year it was big. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're thinking of doing... We, we've been offered, you know, to, to get the stands and stuff and have a stand for ourselves. I was offered the stand for myself and I was like, well, what am I going to do? Just sit there and wave with people. Um, <laughs> but what we're probably going to do is get some big, long, uh, like, wax and we're going to put all props on the inside so we can pay man, some props and we can sell some props out of our max and then just walk <laughs> <on>. <laughs> I like that. I look forward to seeing it. If I see you, every time I bump into you, you're going to be like, can I have a signature? You're going to have to find new and interesting things to sign. Yeah. <laughs> KK2 board, baby. <laughs> that's well, that's, you have to take that for a signature. <laughs> I know, old school. I've everyone's on the first um, nationals. What's up? I said I got everyone's signature on the first ever nationals. Did you? Yeah. Hmm. But everyone. Jabs, Rich, Luke's. That's crazy. I don't think Gary was there. I know I raced, um, yeah, lad. He yeah, was, Tom. Yeah, he was. He's he was like that. I've still got my my quad from from the nationals last year, which is was totally the, ah, So you didn't sell all of them, did you? You liar. Sentimental. Is that a B? <laughs> it is a B. Yeah, a bird's eye B. Six inch. It's actually huge looking at it now. And I remember going, there's no room in this to put a video transmitter and things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my word. Those I've got mine as well, Rich. The... I, flew, I flew the Gravity 280, which was six inch props as well. And I was free S. No way. <laughs> yeah. I, I was on tramadol. Thing... <laughs> so I was just like, Wee! Our, thing, our things change in like a year. Well, in this hobby, it changes is he, every bloody is he still on tramadol, week. though? Yeah, yeah. I, was the, the, I was flying high. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Yeah, I, I know. Oh, I know. Bradders. folks who fly high. Yeah, <laughs> bloody brothers. But at all this angled motor mounts, you know, T motor navigators. Oh man! Look, I'll look, put them on. I'll put them on my QAV two fifty. The screws aren't even big enough. It's like, did I really fly this thing? How did it fly? Surely that's probably how you hurt your leg booting that across the finish line. <laughs> Oh yeah, BL Heli, DYSBL Heli ESCs, boom, 20 amp. Oh, mate, <laughs> SN20s, boy. I'm flying them on Sunday, SN20s. Oh, mate, I've got an SN20 sticker nice. going right next to the Flat Earth <laughs> sticker. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! Um, I'll fly them Sunday in the... That's in the CC3D in, in there as well. Oh, uh, CC3D, man, you're a... You animal, damn it. I know. Dirty, dirty boy. That's fine. Right, guys, thank you for listening and staying tuned to Let's Drone Out. We Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Uh, Erwin said, I want a big Glido, the FOT Vario summer project. 
I recommend a DLG. That's what I fancy. Discus launch glider. Yep, smaller quads are getting quite popular nowadays. Uh, 130s with red bottom Emax motors. I mean, if they push those to uh, ridiculous EU through, uh, through we'll, should it all go light on the grams. Hobby King lol right now. I've been running the wing with a ton of, uh, with an on off switch on the throttle. HPI never flew RC before. Um, let's see what else. Uh, that's about it, man. You guys rock. Thank you, Crispy Cargo. Uh, G Mac FPV, SN20s, they were the days. They were the days. I've still got one of those CC3Ds too, as well, uh, Koki Beast. Uh, try a wee nunchuck soldered to an Arduino board with custom firmware. That's old school. Mate, multi, multi wee flip 32 right here somewhere in this box. I should I should send you a tricopter plate, Rich. But, he yeah. gets sent whole whole things. Uh, yeah, he's not going to want just yeah, to do, run us a competition, a man. <laughs> <laughs> I have well, I will do actually. I've got some I've got some interesting things because I've been racing. I've not had a chance to to do a lot of reviews and 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 any, any give away anything. So I have got a few things that you know could potentially uh, review and then and then send to people and things. You know, like this crazy. Uh, Xero Craft. I don't know if anyone's seen these before. Well, I've seen one of them yeah. once. Yeah, all aluminium and that. I've got another one in the box there that I could uh, give away. I actually really want to get this built. I just don't have the time because the way the battery fits on the back and things, I think it's quite interesting because it looks a bit like the Krieger and the Krieger had the battery on the bottom and that made the, the weight distribution really weird. With that being on there, it's on the right on the centre of gravity so I think that could actually be quite good. Yeah, it does look interesting. Hmm. Sounds like a plan. All right, guys, I'm going to call it there. Thank you. Thank you, Rich, for being on Let's Throw Now. No problem. Where can, where can people find you if they want to subscribe? Uh, just Google HPI guy. You'll find me everywhere. Okay. And uh, my faithful flat earther, Tony. Bonjour, ça va. Don't worry. We are seeking mental psychiatric help. And I've been bright until I fly. Uh, yeah, you can find Tony at Tone Star. The, the Tone, Tone Star, Star 1. The Tone Star One. Thank you. And uh, and, and and good night.